Before going into work, I'll think, separate, observe yourself, notice your sensations, which part of centers are impressions falling on, transform your impressions, be present, the list goes on. I will walk to my car at the end of the work day and have not done one of the above. I didn't remember myself one time. Can you help me? <laughs> no, I can't help you. I can't help you. But I can give you something. I can give you something that in behavior modification is called shaping. And what shaping is, is if you have someone who is challenged, mentally or emotionally challenged, in other words, they, they're not average. They're, they're deficient in some area. And so they have a difficult time getting up and going to school. They have to get up, get dressed, get showered, you know, all the things that you have to do. That average people just, they think, well, you know, you just do it. But people who are not average, who are challenged in some way, they, they are overwhelmed by the hugeness of the task. They look at it and they go, I, I can't do it. So you shape it. And what you do is you pare the, the tasks down from, from this huge task to go, get up, go to school to, all right, well, get up and get your feet out of bed. Okay, now put your slippers on, then go to the bathroom and brush your teeth and comb your hair and wash your face. And so the, the task is shaped. It's broken down into little steps so that the person can deal with one thing at a time. With this whole scenario that, that the, the um, questioner is asking about or talking about, separate, observe yourself, notice your sensations. This is a, this is a lot of stuff. We can't do all that stuff because we're challenged. <laughs> we're retarded. What I mean is our development has been retarded. You know, I know that retarded is, is politically incorrect. It's not a nice word. We're not supposed to say that people are retarded. Why? If you're retarded, you're retarded. Retarded is a valid word. It's, it's an unfortunate label that people have used as a kind of a name calling thing, but that, that's just, that's what people do. They're machines. Well, that's what we do. If you're retarded and you are, you have not realized the possibilities that you could realize because your false personality has stunted your growth. It has retarded your growth. It has held you back by seeking things that don't make you grow. In other words, your false personality has fed you, fed your essential self on junk food, empty calories, food that doesn't really nourish who you really are. What it nourishes instead is bulk. So basically it's made itself fat at the expense of your essential being, your essential self. What we have to do is we have to shift from allowing the false personality to continue to gorge itself on all the impressions that it can get and all of the things that it wants, and on negative emotions, and squandering force and energy on negative emotions. And we have to start just slowly to shape this huge task of changing, changing, changing of the guard, really, from who is running, who is running the household now to who needs to be running the household. And who is running the household now is the cook, the kitchen. You know, what he's supposed to be doing, what the cook's supposed to be doing is peeling potatoes. What he's doing instead is giving everybody else orders on what they should be doing. And nobody, and, and the people he's giving the orders to, nobody knows how to do that job. He's giving, so he'll give the, the maid, um, the maid is supposed to be gardening, and the gardener is supposed to be cooking, and, you know, and the cook's giving all the orders. So everything's screwed up. Nobody knows what they're doing, and all this energy and force is being wasted, and nothing's being done properly. And we're just barely, the house runs, but just barely. And that's us. So we're retarded in that way. And we need to be shaped. We need to have these tasks shaped. So the first thing is, you pick one thing, not a whole list of things, not this whole list of things. My gosh, if I was going to work with all of this, separate, observe yourself, notice your sensations, which part of the centers are impressions falling on, transform your impressions, be present, the list goes on. That's enough right there. That's enough of a list right there to overwhelm the best of us. 
We're machines. We are retarded machines. We have to understand what we are. We are not capable of doing these things. But we can pick one thing and we can put our energy into that and work on that. What is the one thing that we really need to pick first? Well, I, I think you're right, Dan. I think we need to we need to focus on not expressing negative emotions. This is where the work starts. Don't express negative emotions. Well, you can't not express negative emotions. That's the fact. That's the truth about you. You cannot not express negative emotions. You cannot even recognize negative emotions. You don't even know a negative emotion. You only know the very strong ones. It's like you go to the zoo and you see the elephants, but you don't see the anteaters because the anteaters are too small. But the elephants are so big, you can't miss them. Well, our negative emotions are like that. The ones that are so big that we can't miss, we go, oh, oh yeah, I think that's a negative emotion. But the little ones that are eating away and stealing all our force constantly, we don't even know they're there. So what we have to do is we have to start with negative emotions. Start by noticing when you're negative. Start by noticing what it tastes like. Start by noticing things like that. If you do that, all these other things will fall into place in their time. But the, the very most important thing is to pick some negative emotion. We're going to talk about this today. So this will just give us a, an entry into that. And thank you for your question. It was a very good, very good question, very real.